Yeah, that's the chair. Where's my line? stuff with him and I had a conversation I don't remember with who about um, believing he would have been a better candidate for physical pressure do you know why I said no so nope so like when we put physical pressure on a horse it's to ask them to make minimal movements from close up when we put rhythmic pressure on them it's to make them move to the suggestion of air why would he not be a good candidate at first? Why would that not have been why I started with, why I didn't start with that? Yep. Because he's very, very busy and very in your space anyway. And he's got a lot of energy that even if it doesn't look like it right now, he's got a lot of energy that he doesn't know what to do with. So if we can do things that make him move more from our energy, we're allowing him to feel it's okay to have that same energy. Because physical is really quiet and very controlled, where energy is like, ooh, okay. So he, he needs that kind of energy stimulation. So I'm going to have you show me what we did yesterday, and, and let's see what he soaked on. Why did he follow you? Do you remember what a draw was? Okay. Anytime you back up, a horse is supposed to come with you. You're drawing him to you. So you just made him wrong for doing the right thing. You see what I'm saying? So we have to be really careful how we're talking to them and then how much we're yelling at them for listening to us. So how could you have backed up and let him know, but I don't want you to come with me? You could have done that to initially start, and then you could have just kind of like put little lumps in the rope to say, but I don't want you to follow me, okay? Because him following you is absolutely the right thing, and you turned that volume right up to an eight and said, no, okay? And now he's like, I don't know if I'm going to want to do this now, okay? We want him to go, okay, well, that was cool. What else are you going to do, okay? So now we're going we're to ask him nicely to back up. Good boy. Oh, go up and scratch him for that. He's a little leery of you right now because you got mad at him for a good thing. Good. Now he's okay with it. Oh, boy. He might even take a deep breath like, oh, thank God. Okay. Go ahead and give him a backup cue. Oh, boy. So since he's showing us that he actually understands it, let's see if we can make him do four steps backwards. Oh, you stay where you are. One, two, give him that look, okay, we're not done, three, four, now leave him alone for a second, oh boy, okay, so we're not going to do any more of that, we're just, that's going to be your, your build and if we ask him, so ask him to come back to you and then tell him when you think it's far enough. And then say it out loud just so I know when you chose to do it. So now gradually, gradually, gradually start grabbing the line. There you go. Good. And as soon as he starts coming, go loose again. Good. Okay. He is allowed, every horse is allowed to look around as long as their feet aren't involved. Okay. So what else did we do with him? We did the yields for rhythmic. Good. Good, it's okay. 
Okay, then he starts what? Well, it's all right. Okay. Yep. Only thing I'm going to do is take that rope off your arm as it all bundled up around that. Because if he goes running off, he's breaking your arm. Good boy. now so now would be when you would say but don't go forward so that's how you have to explain to him because he got away with walking the first time which is fine and I say get away I don't mean it like he got away with doing something bad he didn't know um, but when he walked the second time that's his way of saying oh I think this is part of it too so now we have to explain to him but it really doesn't mean go forward also okay. good good so it's a wiggle not a pull a pull becomes something that they challenge, and a pull becomes a game of tug of war with you and them, and when they're bigger than you, you really aren't going to win. Yep. Yep. Good boy. Scratch him. Good. It's a scratch. We'll stop the extra movement because you're rewarding there, and now he's looking at you. Okay. So did you get the hindquarters? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now it's not a push, release, push, release, it's a push, stay. And then just imagine a rock in your shoe. You're gonna make it just uncomfortable enough that he says, oh, okay, I don't like that. Good. Do nothing. Now rub him, if he goes to move, rub him and say, but I didn't tell you to do anything yet. Crazy, I was just coming to rub you. Now ask him. Don't let them assume. The only time that they're allowed to respond as you're coming in is when it's a rhythmic energy. Okay, ask for the full crossover now. I know it seems tempting to tug and push and whatever, but stay steady. Because I see your hands going in and out, in and out off the side. Just hold it like a rock. They'll realize it's uncomfortable enough, they'll step off of it. Good. Okay, did we do the rhythmic pull too? Where we look at his tail like he has a butterfly in his tail? Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. And when we cross in front of him, did you tell him you didn't need him to follow you if he was going to? Okay. Yep. So, you know, <laughs> so you can do something about that if, you know, and, that, and that's a little bit of his, a little bit of his communication to you is, is he's mouthy and he's a little dominant towards you. So he's kind of saying, oh, yeah. Um, you can back him up when he does something like that and back him up loudly. Okay. And be like, no, next time you're going to let me touch your face. Because that's not, you're not asking for a whole lot. And as a dominant horse, you should be allowed to touch him anywhere without him having that response. So see if you can politely put your hand on his nose and cross in front of him without any of that. Good. Going in already, buddy. Good. So the only thing I'm, I'm going to change is it's a slight tip of the nose to step out to see if he's got a butterfly in his tail. Then it's a support, and then it's an energy, and then gradually you're going to open your hand and allow that line to just get longer and longer in your hand. But you're not going to get any more up on him. You're just going to kind of ask him to move, like. You can get to where you are, right where you're standing now. You can get to that far, but don't get in the kick zone and get yourself kicked by, you know, you try this with a horse that might kick you or you can help. You don't want to find yourself in that bad position. Hand out. Mm, he did it at the end when you were telling him he was good. So he doesn't really know what he did. So wait till that foot actually crosses over before you release your energy. No, a straddle. The reason I do it that way is that's your emergency stop. That's your don't buck, that's your don't rear. Okay. okay. If they do this, it's like being in neutral in the car and they can still throw it and drive and take off. So we want to make sure that he's disengaged completely. Okay. Still go, still go, still go, still go. Still go, still go. Yep. 
Yep, still go, still go, still go. Oh, he didn't do it yet. He's still straddling. He's staying in neutral. Still go, still go. There. Wait, rub him. Now, did you notice that his rub, your rub startled him? Which means that he needs a little bit more of that. Okay? As soon as you touched me, okay? And then he got into it, but, you know, your initial touch scared him. Yep, yep. So you can do a little more friendly stuff, a little more approach, like... Can you, if you tried to go into him kind of like you were drunk, but you decided to show up here anyway and pet your horse like, hey, hey, can you do that and think you're not going to send him to the moon? He's like, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. We did his head down from a rain cue. Okay, let's see if he remembers that. Be patient with him to think that he does remember it. He might fight it first, but then he's gonna go, oh, wait a minute, I remember this. Just give him a second, give him a second. Good. So you get a little fight in him still, that's okay. Ask again. He got He got it now, he just told you. So just give him a second. Like, oh, wait, wait, I got this, wait. Oh, yep, it's, it's going to be the release. It's going to be in that exact moment. So as soon as he pushes down on you, if he fights a lot, then allow him when he push, pushes down on you at you, allow that there. Now give him a big break on that. You can even walk him for a second. A lot of licking and chewing. Did you see? It was almost like a game of cookie. Yeah. yeah. So when they get really thinking about that or really into it, now we got, this is where we had some trouble yesterday. Make sure that you read him. So do do yourself a favor and go stand over there by those jump standards and allow him to kind of zigzag back and forth in front of you. He has issues with this arena. I don't know if, if he's ever been allowed to run around here loose. Okay. See how he just kind of got up under himself when he got a little bit closer to there? Just let him look. Send him over to that uh, banner. You stay there. You send him back around. And... Nope, nope. You stay. Send him out towards me and then around. Never, of course, between you and the scary object. That's when they jump on you. Give him a go cue. He doesn't know what to do with his feet. As soon as his feet move, leave him alone. Good, leave him alone. Let him look. Good, pull him out of your space. Oh, let him look, let him look. Oh, let him look. It's okay. Send him back to the wall. Let's see if we can go past this door without him being worried today. That's not about the door. He's listening to the dogs. Yeah, he's fine. Okay. So, let's see. I don't need to go all the way there for that. do kind of a constructive thing to do with his nose because he's so busy wanting to be all on his nose. You're going to put his nose on that middle green stripe. You can use you can use something he just learned as opposed to something you already like so don't direct his nose down there by pulling his nose down there yet. And try to do it with very little micromanaging. Good, let him, he was offering it all. Let him, yep, yep. Good, good, now leave him alone for a second. Yep, and even sometimes leave him alone, just leave him alone. 
you know, like don't even cuddle. Okay, ask him to put his nose down again. Good. Good. I know. Ask him to put his nose down again. Good. Long straight. <laughs> So we did rhythmic yields, right? We can do that as a turn signal on his nose to direct his nose where we actually want his nose to go. Yep, you just do you just do it like a little wiggle at his nose to say, hey, I want your nose. Yep, there you go. And when his nose turns, don't push it. See how you went from tap tap pushed. Good. Now gentle when you ask, because now you can ask nicely. You know, it's more of a suggestion. Good. Sure. Yep. So now what we're going to do is we're going to ask him. So instead of dropping the line, you're going to say, could you put your head down? And then he's going to say, yeah, I can, but I'm going to do it with all this exuberance and say, well, that's great. But instead of releasing, you're just going to let the tension out a little bit. And then you're going to take the tension back to say, I'd like a little more. This way you can control how low, excuse me, how low he'll go. Yep. Good. So we took the tension all the way out, so we don't want to do that. Just so he gets the right answer. Good. He's getting, a, he's getting away with getting all over the place, so that's why. Hold on. Let me, let me see for a second. Okay. So we're just going to take a light feel. And then we're going to say, okay, how about. Ah, ah, ah. So we're not going to allow any of that. There's a little. Nope, we're not going to allow any of that anymore. I'm just asking him to look for it, and when he gets himself all twisted up. See, I don't have a whole lot of tension on there. I'm just suggesting it. No, no, no. He's just so sure there's supposed to be a fight. So let's see if we can find a spot that really thrills him. I was going to say, he didn't really like that. Does that thrill you right there? Yeah, right there. was good. Saying not so much though. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say he's not minding this, but if you watch, he does that head toss I'm angry at you thing. So he's not really liking that. So you saw that the pressure that I gave him, it was a suggest, like he understands it now, so to, to do it as a full fight is, is just going to stay in a fight with him.
Good boy. Good boy. Okay, now he was the one that I didn't think teaching him over was a really good idea yet. Because he tried to come at you already with his rib cage. But he's big. If we can explain it to him, obviously having him step over to some place, say you're out on a trail ride and all you have is a rock, you know, having him able to do that instead of going <laughs> might be helpful, right? Um, so this is how we have to be careful explaining this to him because he's so quick to go oh, with you, right? So because this is the dominant horse. So, but, but he, he's a little weak in the hind end. I don't know if you kind of noticed that. So he, he kind of like, he's almost wobbly in the hind end. Um, so we want to be careful just by inviting that. That's all. So we, we want it to be an, an explanation of this is a specific thing I've asked for. I'm not asking you to come into my space all the time with your hind end because he's already learned how to bully you with his head. He's learned how to bully you with his tail, with his shoulder. We don't want his hips and back feet to get involved. Um, we'll go on the other side and we'll ask him to step over just by physically asking him. And then we're going to see if we can't get him to listen to a rain cue. We may be struggling with that anyway because he's all about fighting with his head. So we may find that a rain cue is something we're going to work a little hard on. Okay, But it's going to be important anyway to have so you have your emergency stop. Because a lot of horses don't have emergency stops installed. And, it blows my mind. <laughs> okay, so go on the other side. And we're going to do that same hind yield that you did the original one. Yep, yep. Good, good. Oh boy. Oh boy. He gets real big when he doesn't think he understands stuff. <laughs> He gets real. <gasps> it's like like you, you put alka seltzer in his feet. <laughs> okay, ask him for another one. Good. Good. Now, this is another thing we're going to struggle with a little bit because he's so quick to get oh, in your space like that. So this is this is why I want to be real careful about how we teach this to him because we could end up you know helping him be a monster. Okay. So we're going to very, very nicely, and I'm going to even have you put your arm over, at least your hand over his spine to kind of help yourself stay where you need to stay, because that's going to be the most important part, is you need to stay like you're in the saddle. So you're going to glue your rib cage against his side. Nope, the side that you're, yep. And you're going to nicely, okay, he's going to come right around like a snake, okay? We already know this. So you're going to nicely say, could you bring your nose around? When he brings his nose around politely, not in aggravation, because he's going to do it like, you know, mouth open, ready to have a fight with you. Yeah. As he does it politely, you're going to release and rub. Okay. Let him know that that's all we want. We want him to check in. We don't want him to attack us. Okay. What do I do? chop him away. Good, good. And I'm glad you rewarded it there because you rewarded him thinking nice. Okay? So, again, it's going to be such a gentle feel. Walk with him, walk with him. That's going to be the important part. Stay with him, stay with him, stay with him. Now he's thinking. See how much he's thinking right now? Stay with him, stay with him. Yep. There, reward that. Yep. Go ahead and ask again. It's a very suggestive feel. It's a very light feel. With this horse, you're going to need a lot of really light feels until you can have a stronger hand or, or a more you know, communicative hand. Because right now, anything rough with him, he's ready to just pick up a fight. His gloves are already on. Okay, now, there was slight naughty thought in that, but he changed his mind. Okay? Good. Stay with him. Ask again. Gentle, gentle. 
Very suggestive. He's got his attention somewhere else. Just hold and wait. Let him give to you. He's thinking, but he's paying attention to something else. But he's still thinking about you. Okay. Just hold and wait. Hold and wait. Move with him. Hold and wait. Yeah. Oh, he had it in his thought there. Don't, don't see. I'm watching that line, and I see it getting looser and tighter and looser and tighter. Keep as solid of a field as you can have. It's just you're literally just there. Good. One more real light one. We're actually going to take him for a walk so we can untangle him a little bit. Good. Now take him for a walk and let him. Because that was almost like restraint for a hyperactive kid to sit chair. <laughs> it, it's hard for him to do that. See, he's so busy wanting to mess with you. So what you can do is kind of when you take him for your little walks, take him someplace you want him to put his nose and just plan on like putting his nose on one of the poles or putting his nose on something. So that way you give him something constructive to think about. Because as soon as you went for your walk, the first thing he said is, oh, and it's my opportunity to mess with you because there's nothing else interesting to do. There you go. And then when you bring him back, bring him back like you're, you're going somewhere. Like bring him back with purpose. We're not going to meander. Meandering to some place is fine, but bring him back with purpose. You'll see he needs that extra fire in his feet. See how much nicer he's walking with you? Good. Now he wants to mess with you again. <laughs> You're such a little kid. Good. He is, he's just a little, he's just a, like a young, young, young mentally for sure. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. We're gonna ask him to gently bring his, don't let him get in your space when he's so willing to be all mouthed up on you. And you can do that. You can make, when he gets all mouthy on you, back him up 10 steps and do it with the, the highest volume you've got. Yeah, see, I had a feeling you were gonna introduce some. Oh, you gotta get all the yawning pictures today. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm eating, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying, every, every horse will yawn because their brain's busy. It makes them yawn. So every horse yawned yesterday and we didn't get any pictures of anybody yawning. But that's like a goal of mine. Good boy. There you go. Now you found something, but don't don't waste it. You know what I mean? Like don't satisfy that itch. And the other trick is, is you're gonna want to let him have his head right back. Yep. If he wants to take it straight ahead, yep. Not now though, because you're asking for something. See how he got his head away from you? He's gonna try everything to make this his game. Any attitude attached to that, but that's not. Oh, it was nice in the beginning. So we're just going to teach him how to, to to be polite in his engagements with us. Like that's. Oh, give it, give him that, give him that. Let him. Good. Oh, what a nice look he's got on his face now. Good boy. Now I want you to actually walk. You walk off and leave him alone for a second. But if he wants to move around, let him move around. But don't, don't, um, actually, you're not, I didn't want you to take him away. I'm sorry. I meant just, you could leave him, to, like, I didn't want him to get involved in all that. Because okay. um, you just kind of get away from him and let him, if he needed to move, that was okay. Because he gets a little bit of fire in his feet. But, yeah. Good. I wanted to reward him for the, the opportunity to be polite. Because he had a very soft look in his eye. And that's probably one of the first times I've seen him have a soft look in his eye when you're asking for something. Because mm -hmm. he's like, he's quick to be like, you're not going to tell me. Okay, <laughs> so we want to make sure that when he does offer softness, that we're like, you're right, and leave him alone. So that way he, so you, you could have like, you know, told him don't come with me and stepped away from him. But I, I miscommunicated. Okay, so go ahead and ask him for that nice, gentle, sweet turn to you. Yep. Tell him that his getting in your space was not correct. 
make sure you don't loop that so if he ever takes off with you, you're not going to get your hand broke. So this time, after you ask him to come around and he still comes out with a mild attitude, after you release to say, good boy, now we're going to ask for a gentle feel again, kind of like when we're asking for a little bit more of the head down. It's a gentle feel to say, could you come around a little bit more, and then let's, now we're looking for the sweetness again. Like small. Yep. Now, as soon as he gives, he's going to give politely this time, so just stay nice. He already had his fight. There, leave him alone. There, leave him alone. See, he fought with you when you were busy turning him around or when he was busy doing all his turning around, and then his brain changed. If you saw his eye soften and his fight was over, so we want to take total advantage. I don't remember who I was talking to about yesterday, but his window's about this big, Yeah. okay? And you got to get in his head when his window's open, okay? So his window's open right now, so we're going to go ahead and ask him. Gentle, gentle, don't change anything about what you've been doing. Let him think it through. There. One more. Don't turn it into a pull. Let him think it through. He's thinking and digesting at the same time, which is great. Good boy. That's huge change for that horse, right? Do you ever see any of that softness? <laughs> I haven't seen any of it yet. Good boy. Now look at his, even his steps. His steps are less rude. Go ahead and ask for another gentle request. He's already even offering it. Good boy. That was a total check-in. He's like, oh, you want to do something? Okay, instead of rrr, 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 like he wants to do. Good. So ask again. This time you're going to ask, say, good boy for giving me that much, and I want a little bit more, and I want you to stay polite about it. Good, he's still being polite. So now you're going to just, like, release the tension, but you're not going to go loose on the line. and try not to make it back into a jerk. So you're gonna just try to as softly as you can release the line and then bring it back to yourself. So that way he doesn't feel like he's been jerked back into commanding. There, very nice. There, very nice. So now we're even gonna look for more. Cause we're gonna need quite a bit more, but we have to work with the brain that he's got. He just, he has trust issues and he's got to fight. A lot of fight, a lot of fight. Very nice. Now he's distracted. Just you stay strong on what like when I say strong, I don't mean like get stronger, just stay focused. Good. boy now a little bit more stay with him as, as he walks just stay but notice he doesn't have fire in his feet he has passive walking so you got to take all those positive changes and know when to work with him because those are positive changes it's okay if he walks so that he gave you by default now let's see if he'll check in Don't turn any more tug. I'm watching you pull harder. Leave it. Now, that's the only time you get harder is you just don't allow him to take his head back. Okay. Don't allow him to take his head back. That's the only time you're going to get stronger. And it's just resistant. It's not more of a pull. See, we can't be fast with him, because then he'll fight with you. Just wait on him. Try to be as kind of motionless as you can and just be a rock in his shoe. Yep, and then ask him. Try not to make it too loose quickly. You know what I mean? Like, try to, try to just give back, but don't throw it back at him. 
Oh, that was a nice change. That was a real nice change on his part. Like, your window just, he's, like, actually going to soften his eye like you wouldn't believe right now. So he's actually showing us he, he could open his window a little bit more. Okay. So I don't want to see that snap drop as much as it, I'm watching that snap drop. Now he's actually really slow blinking for us. See, it doesn't look like anything's happening, but a lot is happening. That was a bump, more of like a, there. Now, see if you can get a tiny bit more. So you just happen to have a harder horse. That's why we don't get much done. But we're getting a lot done, believe it or not. You back up so you, you caused him to move his feet. Put your foot back. I know, that's tough stuff, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, just take the, like, take, feel that around, you know what I mean? So don't release, just feel that around. So that way he can kind of say, oh, I'm supposed to give you a little bit more. See how he's not, that was nice. That was nice. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, let's give him a break. And he instantly gets messing with you. So what I'm going to have you do is your break from him, as I am just going to have you weave him in a really good place. Because he, he was like... Namaste, right? <laughs> and then you woke him up and he's like, oh, hey, let's play again, you know? So what we're going to do is we're just going to leave him in that really meditative state. And then we're just going to kind of ease our way away from him and leave him be, okay? Yeah, just, just kind of like, it's all right, dude. You know, there. And then when you go back into him, you can either go back into him kind of like, all right, buddy, we're going to do this again. So now he's looking and chewing. And just kind of go in there with the intention of like rubbing down his shoulder. And then we're going to ask him to bend around again. And we'll move on from that. But those, like he needs these itty bitty bitty things in order to get him to realize that he doesn't have to fight with you about every step of everything. Once you get him through some of these things, then all of a sudden he's going to be like, cool, what are we going to learn today? Because he's got that mind of what are we going to learn today? And it, because he's so quick to mess with you, it's because his brain is so idle but so busy, you know what I mean? Like his activities are so idle, but he's, so he's trying to find games, make games, okay? So the best thing you can do for this horse is a lot of puzzles, a lot of puzzles. Okay. Go ahead and ask him to yield around one more time. Let's see the side that you've been doing. Good. Notice how he didn't want to tear you up that time. Good boy. No, well, I mean, don't do anything about it. So what I would do to see how he's responding is I would actually ask for a little downward and see if he can get his nose to tip down towards you. Just, you, just maintain the angle you're at right now, and just what we're going to look for is him to actually drop his nose towards you. There. It's all right that he moved his feet. Just stay with him. Well, we're doing both. It's like he's just going to tip his nose downward towards you because he's got his head way up and his nose pointed out. So we're just going to, this is our way of knowing that he's actually listening to you and it's not, it's not happening by default. Like, because now, like, they're there. Yep. Kind of slight downward. Let's see if we can't get him to kind of 
come say towards your elbow. You want you're like your your image right now is that his nose is gonna kind of look at your elbow. Don't do a whole lot of moving because you're gonna cause him to move. So just imagine you want him to look at a Google on your elbow. Would you look at this for me? So you got a little bit of fight back in him. Good. Good. So we can get that much head uh, without that. And no feet. We'll quit on that. So let's see if, if we can get him to tilt his head at least that much, as politely as he's been, without his feet going. Good. Good. We'll do one more. See if we can get one more like response to you. That wasn't it. Good. So let's quit on that. Um, some horses, you know, you can kind of just grab them and pull their nose around, and when they resist, you know, when they finally relax, you let them go. Um, in his case, we're trying to teach him how to just do things quietly. Um, how does he lunge? Like he under, do you think he understands it? So if you send him out on a circle, you can just stand like this, and he's not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's teach him actually what his responsibility is. So first you're going to back him up, then you're going to tell him which way you want him to go. Oh boy. Yep, yep, yep. Back him up a little bit more. So he's kind of shuffling, but we'll see if we get one straight back. When the horse backs up true, they back up straight. So now, when you point for a horse to go in the direction you want him to go, it's not as obvious as you think. It's not like go this way, because if you watch the line off his nose, you're going to bring the horse right to you. He's going to end up right here and all curled up with you. You want to tell him to go turn your head back. So you would actually point to me to tell him to go out on the circle that way. You can use the end of the line if you want, or I can get the stick out. Now, yep. Now, you're going to give him a, a go cue. He needs to know that you're telling him to move his feet. Now you're pointing over there. I'm over here. And he did exactly what you told him to. Yeah, Is he okay with it or does he have fear of it? Yeah, no. So, if he were attached to me, I'd point back there, yep, and I wouldn't do anything with the line. I wouldn't take tension on the line. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to guide him that way. Good boy. Good boy. Now he's confused. So he's getting a little fire in his feet. He did understand backing up. I would point back to like the, you know, the post by the mounting block. Then I would raise my stick and I would kiss. I'd just raise the stick out to my side. I wouldn't do anything else with it. I'd kiss, tell him that means I want you to go somewhere, and then I'd leave him alone. His job is to just keep going. If he stops and checks in, first of all, horses don't know that you want them to do 15 laps. They don't know you want them to lunch for 20 minutes. They don't know anything. So they may go, is that enough? There's nothing wrong with that. He's asking you a question, so don't get mad at him. Be like, get back out there, okay, or chase him with the stick. Just be like, well, thank you for checking in. I'd like you to keep going. Eventually, he's going to stop checking in until you say, I'd like you to come in now. 
but he has to understand what you're asking for. I'm over here. There you go. If he goes to go the other way, you're going to get loud to say wrong answer and then go right back to telling him where. I'm over here. Hi. See how gradually the hand keeps going back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swinging it to where it will tap him in the shoulder because you want to guide his shoulder, not his hind end. Gentle. Yep, he just doesn't understand. He's not trying to out persist you in this. So I have very precise go cues, and it helps my horses know. 